Let's talk about card scrapers. Card scrapers are one of the most underutilized tools by beginning woodworkers and one of the most used tools by woodworkers who've been around a little while. And there's a reason for that because these can get crystal clear finish ready surfaces in seconds, whereas sandpaper can really take a long time. This creates a severed fiber surface rather than sandpaper, which creates a kind of smushed fiber surface. Although they both get them very smooth, this is going to give you a better crystal clear finish uh, than sandpaper. And it really helps you get you out of jams in places that are hard to sand with an electric sander, uh, like corners and things like that. And also, you know, if you make a mistake and put a little dent in a finish ready piece of furniture or a project you're working on, these work great for just touching up an area. Uh, one of the reasons that a lot of people don't use them is they're difficult to sharpen in the sense that it takes a little bit just to get good at it, but really it's very, very easy. So I wanna show you how I sharpen a card scraper and then how I use it and why they're so great. So a card scraper is just a piece of square steel. They also come in lots of different shapes and sizes. This is for doing like dowels and outside uh, this is for doing coves and things like that. You can get card scrapers like this that have, you know, multiple surfaces on them so you can sharpen the whole thing. This is called a gooseneck scraper, which a lot of people use in moldings and so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you how to sharpen a square or rectangle card scraper and that is something that can be applied to all of these. So these are the tools that you need to sharpen a card scraper and I like to use, this is my kind of little secret to making it even better, is I cut a kerf in a piece of wood and put a bastard file in it so that, I don't know if it's a really a bastard file, I don't know his parents, but it's a great way to get a 90 degree cut on a card scraper and it really has helped me kind of get where I need to be. You need a burnisher. Uh, this is just kind of your standard burnisher and a burnisher is basically just a round piece of steel that is stronger than the card scraper. Veritas makes a great jig. These work really well. Uh, they're about 60 bucks, so you don't really need one, but they are really, really great. So the magic of a card scraper is the way that it works and so, when we sharpen, we're gonna take a card scraper and make it perfectly square, like this. Pretend I can actually draw square lines. And then once it is square, we're gonna make sure everything's nice and smooth. And then what we're gonna do is draw out these edges so they start to come up like this. And then we're gonna roll them over into a hook so that the edge looks like this. And you won't be able to see this, this is kind of on a microscopic level, but what happens is this hook right here, and we can create a hook on both sides, this hook right here will grab your wood and peel it like a shaving, just like a hand plane, except for it doesn't get tear out, which is incredible. So uh, I'm gonna show you the process. We're gonna start by getting it square and then drawing out the edges and rolling them over. I'm gonna show you how I use it. Okay, so our first step in sharpening a card scraper is something you only need to do about every four to eight times you sharpen it. And the reason is that once you clean everything up and make it look nice, then you can roll the edge over multiple times and it'll still work. It's important to take your time when you need to redo it because if you leave this, the rougher you leave this, the more chance that edge has of breaking and you needing to resharpen it. So it really reduces the longevity of your edge on a card scraper. So what I like to do, to get it started and get it square, is I'll put it in a vise, and then I just put a little oil on a rag and just rub it on top. That kind of helps with the sharpening process. And then I take my file that's in my block of wood here, and I just rub it over the top, making sure that it's square. And you'll see it get a fresh, clean surface on top. And there we go. And you can feel a burr start on both sides. And then I'll take the file and do the edges. And you can feel that's perfectly square. And then what I'll do is I'll just make sure the corners are a little bit rounded just so they don't have a sharp edge, which helps your hands when you're cutting and also keeps the corners from digging into your work. Feel it, make sure there's no burr and you got a nice clean square edge.
Now we're going to go ahead and go to our sharpening stones. So now that we have our edges square and true, we're going to sharpen them. And the reason that you don't want to just go from here to your burnisher is the file on a microscopic level leaves really big scratches. And so when you fold the hook over, there's more failure points in that hook for it to happen. So what I'm going to do is just take, you can do this with water stones or diamond stones. I like diamond stones because doing this can really run a groove into your good water stone. So I'll use my diamond stones and you only need to just do the edges and the top. So I'll just take it, rub it along the edges about 30 times. And then when you go to do the top, it's really easy to keep it square. Just use the block of wood with your file in it. And you just run it like that. We've gotten our card scraper square, and now we're gonna go to step two where we pull those edges up. People say between five and 15 degrees on a burnisher. I think about five. If you put it on the edge of your bench, I hold it at about like that. And then you wanna use kind of the same pressure that you would use to push an elevator button or a crosswalk button. So it's not a lot, it's some pressure, but not a lot. So when we draw this edge, I put it about I don't know, an eighth, an inch, eighth of an inch from the edge of my bench, hold it at about five degrees and I just go 10 times, flip it over, 10 times. And then, let me do the other side here, 10 times. Now what we do, we put it in our vise and with about the same amount of pressure, I just use kind of the weight of my arms. I don't push down. You don't want to smash this thing because right now you have a microscopic piece of bent metal that is kind of sticking straight up. So we're going to just do this about six to eight times. So we're just going to go two, three, four, five, and whatever angle you choose, lock your wrists in and keep it there. Six, seven, eight. Turn it around, and you should be able to, with your fingernails, catch that edge. So you'll feel this little hook hanging over the edge there. So let's do the other side. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do the other side. We're going to feel for that hook. Make sure, oh yeah, you can hear it. So we're gonna flip that over now and do this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, good hook there. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Now, let's see how we did and I'll show you how I use it. Couple of things you should know here. If you're making dust, you're either A, not sharp or B, holding it at the wrong angle. So you can see if I hold it like this, I'm gonna make dust. That's not what you want. You want a curl. So you wanna hold it up even more and you put a slight bend in the card scraper. And then you get these nice curls here. So Ooh, baby, that's smooth. Look at that, that's like a shaving from a hand plane. Now let me show you how fast a card scraper works. We'll put some pencil here. Look at that, gone in one stroke. It would take, you know, a couple seconds, probably 10 seconds with a sandpaper to get that gone, so. So look at that guys, this is an actual shaving that I just got with the card scraper, that was incredible. One of the things to know is if you do this really fast, this is gonna get really hot. So you can put a piece of tape or a magnet or something on the back here that might help with the heat. But you don't wanna get it crazy hot because then that could end up weakening your steel. So, you know, just go nice and slow. 
<laughs> I am really happy. And when you guys do this and get it right, you will be that happy. Shavings like this are so cool. I mean, I'm going against the grain. I can feel I'm going the wrong way if I were using a hand plane. And so you can use a card scraper pushing away from you like that, or you can pull it towards you. And look at those shavings. I mean, it just is smooth as a baby's bottom. So um, get a card scraper. It makes life great. And it really makes finishing really easy. Look at those shavings. Look at that. Those are full length shavings. Oh man, guys, this is fun. Let's see how big of a shaving I can actually do here. Whoops. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That's like a real curl. Oh my gosh. So fun. And honestly, when you get good performance out of your tools, it is so exciting. And I think the thing that held me up in the beginning that I was having such a hard time was the pressure on the burnisher. That angle doesn't matter as much, you know, 15, 15 degrees. It's, it's roughly, you know, that's not that far off from each other, but I was reaming into that thing. It's just light pressure, light pressure when you're burnishing and keep the same angle, take your time every you know, four to eight sharpenings to get it really nice. You can see I've done it a lot here. I'm <laughs> starting to wear down grooves into this thing. I've done it so many times, but use a card scraper. You will be so happy you did, especially when, you know, you have times that you're getting really bad tear out. It, card scraper will never get tear out. I mean, it, you can't get tear out with a card scraper unless you're William Walker. Go check out our Instagram if you want to see the William Walker Cats Moses feud that's been going on. Uh, head over to the Cats Moses store. Grab a dovetail jig or a t-shirt, a pack of stickers. Uh, we love to have you. Please subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe in the shop.